And welcome back. I wanted to give you a little bit of an update on our charger, which you've seen in a couple videos and especially in our load testing videos. If you remember when this particular charger came in, it had a cracked display from shipment and that's the display there. Uh, now I, I did email the seller and uh, it's been a while. I just haven't been able to get to this. And since I can control the charger through the PC, uh, it wasn't kind of a priority to change this. But I did email the seller and let them know that this got cracked in shipment. And about two weeks after I emailed the seller, in came in this. As you can see, they did send a replacement display. And what this has is, and I've already desoldered it from the old one. I didn't have a new set of headers to put on it, otherwise I'd have done that. And I didn't show you the desolder process on this because the, you know, showing soldering tutorials on YouTube, uh, you know, can lead to a lot of heated debate. Uh, so I did desolder this from the original display. And as you can see, all this is is a header pin. And it plugs into the main board. I, mean, I guess you can call it the main logic board or the main CPU board that kind of sits right there. And we'll we'll show you all this when we go to, go to reassemble it. But uh, all I'm gonna do is take this header pin and get it resoldered into this placement display and then uh, I'll show you the final assembly one of the questions one of the follow-up questions I've been asked about this charger was to verify that this charger uh, did in fact on the power supply have a 110 220 selectable switch now just like in the previous videos if you look at this sticker here it does state that it's 110 220 volt 50 60 Hertz 5 amp DC out I'm sorry 5 volt DC out 60 amp current and the seller when I ordered this emailed me back before they shipped it and asked which version I would like to have and I did tell them since I'm in the states I needed the 110 to 110 120 version of it but just to verify at least on the one that I was sent hopefully you can see that okay that is the selection switch on the bottom of the power supply which it is currently set to a hundred and ten volts now I'm not going to say that they all have that option uh, but this one does. Uh, now, what I was sent for a power supply or a power cord, if you remember in the previous video, was a um, European style pl uh, plug. But what I forgot to show you, and I found it in the box later on, was an adapter that took the European style or, or foreign 220 plug and adapted it to a 110 volt state outlet. Now, I wouldn't suggest using those, type of, those types of adapters. I don't like them. It's easy enough and, and in my opinion, a bit safer uh, just to go out and find a monitor cord. Um, as you can see here, just a standard PC monitor power supply cord, uh, which is what this back of this power supply, uh, back of this uh, charger, discharger unit and tester is, is set up to use for. So without further ado, like I said, I'll get the header pin resoldered onto this, and that will allow us to plug in our main board, and then uh, we'll uh, we'll bring you back and show you how that goes. So I just wanted to show you that we've got our header pin reinstalled. Uh, not the world's greatest job because I had to again reuse that header, but uh, it'll it'll get the job done for for what we need. I just wanted to show you how this actually assembles is that um, again that's the main board that plugs into the header pin on the replacement display but the way this display mounts is that that's your main display obviously that fits in the, the front of the case and then what they do is is what screws into that that just kind of goes flush against the stand-ins and the in the front of the faceplate here but then what they do is they take these nylon standoffs after the display is in place and put one in each corner so these little standoffs as they thread into these I'm sorry nylon standoffs as they stand in, as they thread into the metal standoffs in the front cover uh, will secure the front face in place you plug your main board back into it and then there's screws that then screw into the back of this standoff that go through the main board and help secure it. But I'm going to get this all reassembled and we'll bring it back and 
see if our uh, replacement display was a success. So just to bring you back, to let you know, show you that we've got our display reinstalled. And you can kind of see how it sits in there. Hopefully it's just coming through okay. So you've got your display, which goes flat up against the mounting bosses or the standoffs on the front face. Then the nylon insert that then screws into it that helps the display in place. Then you got the main board, uh, which plugs into the front display that you can see here. And then, of course, the display itself just has those screws that I was talking about that screws into that standoff. And although very nice, very modular construction, uh, which was nice because it was, was pretty easy to get the, dis the old display out and the new display in. And you can kind of see that's kind of how the construction of this unit is overall everything's very modular power supply is modular um, main control board here where you're you know you've obviously got your uh, your load for doing your load testing uh, as well as your regulators and such are all mounted on one heat sink it's got its own control board and uh, you know separate uh, I guess you would call it main control board or possibly even CPU board there and your little buck converter thanks to a a comment left on the previous video that buck converter is actually here to drive this big fan that you see here in the back but enough of that rambling we've got it plugged in and yes i do have the case open so just be careful don't i'm only doing this for testing purposes and let's see if our display looks better than what it did and that looks good you can see there that we now have a functioning display which is a lot better than the way it looked when it was first shipped here. And, uh, and, and just to admit, uh, again, as you saw in the previous videos, we have the ability to control this via the PC, so the display wasn't critical. But it is nice that we do have that now because we can, can, we can run and control this charger now independent of the, the PC. So if something should happen to the computer we're controlling it with, you know, we now still have a means to be able to continue to use this supply. And it was very nice of the supplier to uh, get my message and, you know, do us a, a solid and send us a replacement display. Now, as I said in the previous, uh, in the, earlier in the video, I didn't show desoldering that header pin or soldering the new one on because, you know, showing soldering videos on YouTube tends to have kind of a cult following and, and uh fall under a lot of ridicule because everybody kind of has their own way they want to do things and you know that that's good that's excellent uh, but I will show you what I used uh, to get the header pin off I use this older and um, I'm gonna say an old name here I'm gonna go ahead and turn this power supply off since we're done testing it uh, this is a uh, from a company that no longer exists called Radio Shack and this particular desoldering tool as you can see is mounted just straight to a a standard pencil type soldering iron uh, with just the suction bulb at the top. Now there are automated and battery operated and powered versions of this and I know that you can use desoldering wick and I have used that in the past but I like the suction type desoldering tools better because as it heats the soldering up, apply a little bit of vacuum to it, does a, at least for me it's always done a very nice job of sucking the excess solder off the board and allowing you to at least a little bit easier uh, more remove the component and again I understand everybody has their own method again this is just just mine uh, to do the actual soldering with I picked up one of these guys on eBay uh, earlier this year it's just a uh, uh, one of those generic kind of knockoff t12 uh, soldering stations uh, along with a variety of replacement tips uh, anything from nice big uh, from the nice big uh, spade tip, fl wide flat tips, as you can kind of kind of see in that pack, it came with a variety of them. And again, these are also just the generic uh, T12 uh, soldering bits. For the actual solder itself, and I'm sure this will cause a lot of controversy, uh, but when it comes to electronics, um, I still prefer, as you can probably see here, it doesn't really show it on this one. This is still uh, what you would call lead-based solder. The old, uh, you know, I think that's, yeah, 6040. The old 6040 lead-based solder that's been out for decades is, 
Uh, I have used the silver base solder with electronics before, but I find that the old school 6040 solder just it just flows better uh, for electronics and and in the long run seems to hold up a bit better as well. So I've got the what you can see the zero point and my vision is not what it used to be 0 0.032 I believe that is 22 gauge as you see from the spool there for they're doing the finer joints and for doing the the thicker joints. Again, you see a blast from the past there, good old Radio Shack 6040, and you can see that's 0 .062 diameter, so much, much bigger. I like doing that for the, the heavier duty, heavier, more heavier duty power terminals, um, uh, tinning, tinning uh, the thicker gauge wire, uh, such as this, before putting the connector on it, things of that nature. Uh, obviously, that soldering station there is variable you can kind of set it to the the heat that you need uh, but for doing the much much bigger power connectors things of that nature when you need a lot of heat and you need it quick and you need to get in there and do a really quick soldering joint i don't use this for the smaller stuff obviously it's way too big uh, but for uh, applying a lot of heat as fast as fast as possible um, obviously we've got a, what you can see, a Weller 100P with a nice big, uh, wide, flat tip on it. And I like to use this one to do tinning again, tinning those bigger power cables. Or if it's a situation where I need to attach a, uh, fairly good sized cable, uh, but I want to do it by applying heat as fast as I can, but for a small period as I, as I need to. And again, would have that nice wide tip on it. It does great for, uh, again, tinning these types of power cables and such. And again, I, I understand a lot of this will fall under scrutiny and, and I get it. Everybody kind of has their own method. Uh, these are just some of the methods that uh, I use here and some of the materials that I use. Uh, and I'll put links in the description. Uh, a lot of these MG chemicals item options I, I get on eBay and I'll put a couple of links down there in case anybody's interested. And in case you're wondering what I use for flux, a nice big bottle of liquid flux that you see there. Well, other than that, that'll do it for this video. We went off on a little bit of side tangent real quick, just about some really quick soldering tools. But uh, as you can see that we've got a nice functioning display and we're going to put the cover on this and the, and the repairs are complete. And uh, again, for the gentleman who asked me in the previous video, at least on the model that I was sent, this power supply that serves this whole unit, again, at least in this one, is dual rated and it does have the switch on the bottom as we saw the select the voltage. Other than that, I'll conclude this video and we'll see you guys next time.